An Asian American woman of Chinese descent passed away after 30 plus years diagnosed with um, diagnosed from breast to lung to brain cancer. She died under these conditions while working as a social worker in Chinatown to liberate immigrant children from drug and alcoholic addictions. This might be cruel since many Chinatown activists consider her a um, Saint Teresa at this point. Um, it's not, um, well, I mean, I have a problem with this. And, you know, when you grow up in Chinatown in the 60s and 70s, you had to get out of there <laughs> real quick. Oh, what? Uh, it started when I had volunteered as a basement workshop artist who had freshly graduated college and worked for the city government for two years. The way that any ordinary nine to five job can become monotonous and boring. I'd be. Is that my phone? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, have to buy, you have to buy yourself a drink. <laughs> Give me that gin and tonic. All right, all right. I began participating in basement workshop at 54 Catherine Street, which was a basement with two small rooms that fit about 50 young aspiring Asian American artists from all parts of life. Colombian urban graduates from Taiwan to gangs of Chinatown, and in between Cambodians like La Laotians, Hong Kong born Vietnam vets to Queens bred Asians to San Francisco artists, Japanese Americans who were interned or born in internment camps during World War II. There were about five groups that did community services in Chinatown and I became part of that Asian Arts Resources. We even had to fundraise at the Metropolitan Museum and did storytelling at the Chatham Square Library. Once the gangs of Chinatown upscanded our IBM composer typewriter, but luckily I worked in an art department that had such an equipment. The gang wanted to resell our IBM to us but cutting corners, I volunteered to type the poems to be included in this um, anthology of Yellow Pearl, or Yellow Pearl, whatever. I saved the day. <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, Fei Chang and Fei Chu from basement, oh, Fei Chu from Barnard College began sleeping in the basement. The guys began pairing up with the Asian woman while I was left with no one for some reason. Maybe I was too tall and didn't smoke pot like they did. <laughs> I was getting over this Chinese boyfriend who took me on his first date to Woodstock, and yet he was an ROTC college graduate situated in Monterey, ready to go off to Vietnam. Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam didn't happen for him. Anyways, I participated in anti-war marches, student uprisings, and going to Seven Lows meeting in Lower East Side. Eventually, after a year with a $5,000 grant, we moved to 22 Catherine Street above the Chinatown Health Clinic. There I was more participatory and had quit my job at city government and became office administrator for the basement. I, w I kept the stores open every day of the week, had lighting fixtures installed, brought fabrics for curtains to be made, painted the walls, divided rooms with woven screens, got executive furniture for its library of third world collections and its meeting room, got a dark room built, wrote proposals as treasurer for the board of directors, hired summer interns, funded the artistic fortress from white, uh, 
from white intruders, kept doors open for Chinese guys to hang out to prevent street gangsterisms. Meanwhile, Fei Chang remained in Queens plotting against the board of director while she planned to receive grant money to her Queens home, caused a budget boycott unless we obeyed her demands made overbearing plans and dreams to develop an Asian American culture in New York City. The task can be overbearing when there was a lack of Asian professional artists floating in a poorly immigrant community. Most known artists had to work uptown, midtown, uptown Manhattan in order, in order um, to get low-paying jobs to survive in New York City's classes.